Welcome to the introductory video in the pseudocode series. I'm going to help you get set up and ready to write some pseudocode to help you prepare for exams and the NEA. The style of pseudocode is important. The word pseudo is used to mean false or imitating and we're going to be imitating a coded language. We're going to be freer from all of the syntax peculiarities of a particular language and instead have a design language that can be used to describe the algorithms that we wish to develop. We are going to be following the OCR pseudocode guide for the H446 specification. If you do a search for H446 pseudocode guide, you should be able to find this document. It should look very, very similar. It's just available on the OCR website. As you can see, it covers all of the key elements that you would be expect to be able to demonstrate within the examining components. Very simple to follow. Each part then has an example and a little explanation for you to follow. I'm also going to go through my recommended IDE and show a few basic setup functions. The exam boards say, the following guide shows the format pseudocode will appear in the examining components. It is provided to allow you to give learners familiarity before the exam. Learners are not expected to memorize the syntax of this pseudocode and when asked may provide answers in any style of pseudocode they choose providing its meaning could be reasonably inferred by a competent programmer. However, as you look through mark schemes and examiner's reports, they do highly recommend that you follow their recommended structure and layout in order to maximize marks and minimize the chance of you falling foul of the mark scheme or the examiner looking at your paper. Exercise number one is to follow the link in the description and download Visual Studio Code. Now, I can already hear the questions forming in your colossal brains. Why Visual Studio Code? Do we have to use this to do our coding in? And why are we using this when you force us to write absolutely everything by hand, especially those Cornell notes, which are my favorite, by the way, but that's a different matter. Well, I'm gonna try and answer those questions shortly. The main reason at this moment in time is that we are practicing for the NEA rather than the examining content. Okay, so the coursework in layman's terms. So why VS Code? Because of this plugin. Willems, the superstar that he or she is, has made a plugin that has the vast majority of the key terms that we need to write OCR style pseudocode. And we get all the added benefits, things like auto tabs, code completion, suggested code, and many more. So, once you've installed VS Code and the plugin, what next? Well, let's have a look. You should arrive at a welcome screen similar to this one, depending upon updates and when you installed, etc. My first little tip, just so that you guys can see, is that Control and Plus is to zoom in, and Control and Minus is to zoom out. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it about here and we'll see how that looks on screen when we start doing a little bit of code. Here's the cool bit. With Willems's plugin, we can create a file type of .sudo. Once we do that, VS Code will recognize our syntax and do all the cool IDE functions already mentioned. So let's set up an example file. So if we go to File, New File, and then go to Save As, if we then do example dot sudo, make sure that you've spelt that right, and click save. You can then see that Visual Studio changed. We've now got generic sudo code as the language type. Right, well, I've quickly just um, copied some of these from the example sudo code guide, and you can see that we, uh, key terms are highlighted. What happens if you don't want to use VS Code? Well, I know a number of you use and love PyCharm, and quite rightly, it's an excellent IDE. The best way to use PyCharm is to use a .txt file. You won't get the color coding and the autocomplete from VS Code, but you can still tab and indent easily, and it's very easy to read. So if we have a look, I'll copy and paste that across to PyCharm, and we'll have a look how it would look in there. Right, so all I've done here is go to File and New, and I've chosen a basic file rather than the Python file that we would usually use if we were setting up any kind of coding file. Okay, so if you just do file, it will do a .txt and you'll get some of the benefits. You'll still be able to 
include indents and you'll also be able to tab things across that kind of thing the last feature I want to show you is the color highlighting which is really useful for your coursework the color settings are down here on this cog now once you get here you can click and change this to your heart's content everybody knows that your ability to code is indirectly linked to how edgy and cool your color scheme is lots and lots of different um, options for you to choose I'll let you have a look around and choose these once you've found a look that suits you you can easily copy and paste to a document now I've prepared one earlier and the benefit is that you'll get the formatting and the layout of the original file which means that editing and tweaking your algorithms becomes much simpler further down the line so if I copy and paste this that's my word document and paste in I'll just zoom out so you can see this and maybe make it a little bit smaller now you can see that we've got the color code but what's really good about this is that it continues the color scheme so if you are looking to make changes it becomes very very easy once you're in your word document and you're writing up your NEA again the color schemes always match so if I go back to Visual Studio Code and I decide that I'm in a darker mood I can then copy and paste this go back to the word document and paste in and this time we get the new color scheme well that's it for this video in the next one we'll have a look at some basics and get into some exercises